Today we're going to be talking about how to do a harmonic dictation with the primary diatonic chords. Our goals for this are to notate a soprano and bass voice, what I call the outer voices, um, and then uh, to notate harmonic function through Roman numerals and to provide cadence labels for a short harmonic progression. For now, our choices will include just the primary diatonic chords. Those are one, four, five, or five, seven. Also, some strategies to consider. Some people like to focus on a bass line first, and from there determine Roman numerals and then focus on the soprano. Um, others like to dictate the soprano melody first and figure out what chord choices are possible given um, all the notes and all the parts are going to be chord tones. And then other students will like to focus on hearing tonic predominant or dominant function for each chord and then determining a bass line from there. For our first dictation, we're going to stick to root position chords. Um, hopefully that will be doable for you. Before we get started, let's make sure we know what the one, four, five, and five, seven are in the key of D. Take a moment to spell those for yourself. The D chord is D F sharp A. The four chord is G B D. The five chord is A C sharp E. And if it were five seven, you add a G to it. And those are our harmonic choices for this dictation. Let's give it a go. D sounds like this. Let's sing the warm up together. Ready, go, do, mi, so, fo, mi, re, do, ti, do, so, do. The first chord sounds like this. And let's listen to this short progression for the first time. Choose now to either attend to the bass line, to the soprano line, or to try to listen for chord function. Another thing you can try to do is just mark every time you hear a tonic triad. If you're getting stuck trying to work out the soprano or the bass line, just try to hear where tonic occurs. We start on the tonic chord. Let's go a second time through. Did you find the tonic chords? Every other chord is a tonic chord. This is really good information. I'm gonna play it one more time for us and see if you can fill in the gaps. Let's review the answers. We'll start with the soprano line. It began on sol, and then it should go so, la, so, fa, mi. In notation, that's A, B, A, G, F sharp. Now, if we understand those to be the chord tones, our choices are then limited as to what we can use to harmonize given the constraints I've put on the prompt. So for example, the second chord has a B in it. There's only one chord that is a choice in this activity that would have B in it, and that is the four chord. 
the G chord, G, B, D. Both of the A's in the first measure are harmonized with the one chord. Look at the fourth chord of the example. The soprano for that is Fa. Now in this case, we have two choices that are possible. It could either be the four chord, G major, or it could be the five seven chord, A seven, and the G would be the chordal seventh. So the question is, what kind of harmonic function are we hearing there? Is it predominant or dominant? And the answer is dominant. And it resolves to a one chord. Try to think about harmonic dictation as an aural and cognitive logic problem. So given whatever information you can trust most from your ears, from that, you can build the other remaining items with the knowledge you have about what is logical. Note and chord choices are limited because of constraints we've put on the activity, namely just using one, four, five, or five, seven. All the notes will be chord tones. I hope you enjoyed our adventures in harmonic dictation. We'll do plenty more in class.